is the deal is, okay, I'll spend exorbitant amount of money on mortgage and rent and this and that. But just don't let it go. But you got to have a window that faces the right way. My house doesn't have that. Well, I live in Hermosa, and they they used to not have even zoning laws. So they build these giant houses that like have views, and they block you. Right. The view. Hi, how you doing? How hot is it? It's very hot. I was. It's just, fleshly hot. Yeah, I was just telling Tommy. There's when it's hot like this, you wonder why you pay taxes here because this is not the deal when you come to California. My if, neighbors put in air conditioning. And so my wife's out of town. She goes, just go to the neighbor's house. I said, they're not home. She goes, just go to the neighbor's house. Yeah. Like I have a key to their house and know how to turn. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to sweat it out. Wait, wait. They have air conditioning? They have. I don't know why they put air conditioning Can in Can I have house. the key? I know. God. I know. Yeah. I was telling Tom we were like splayed <laughs> yeah. on the bed with a very well-targeted oh. um, And then we, have, we have two cats that just were looking at me like... I can call the SPCA and get you imprisoned right now oh, for keeping us in this house. It's just been awful. And I know people have no, absolutely no sympathy for us. No, but why should they? Yeah. but Yeah, we, people an hour away in the Inland Empire are just like, <laughs> suck it up, buttercups. But I was in Big Bear for 4th of July, and yeah. it was nice and cool up there. Yeah. It was, it was, I didn't want to leave. Nicole's been in Canada. How was it up there? I have. It was great. Yeah. It rained a day, yeah. but yeah. it was beautiful. Not hot. Perfect weather, 70s. Oh, really? Sunny in 72. And I'm sure the Canadians, even if it had been 10 billion degrees, would have still oh, been yeah. nice about it. Exactly. Although they would have apologized oh, they would have to apologized you. <laughs> sorry, sorry <laughs> it's so Even if it's like 50 degrees, they think it's the prettiest day of the year. The Canadians. Seriously. We, I was Canadians. talking to Nicole about this, that it does seem the higher you go, even in America, like you get around Minnesota, people get nicer. And I'm wondering if that there's something about that. The equator. Yeah, or whatever. It's not the equator. The, equator. <laughs> the closer you are to the what, equator. What the... is that thing? Oh, the border. Right. It, niceness but radiates. You're right. Canadians are so nice. Is that your first experience with yes, Canadians? Yes, first. Well, the best. my dad's stepsister's from Can- from Canada. From but, Canada? From Canada. <laughs> but I've never been to Canada, and right. everyone was so nice. Yes. I've never met so many nice people in one area, seriously. And you've, you've been, you went to a wedding. Yes. And it was... A destination wedding. Destination wedding. Sometimes presumptuous, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't really destination because yeah. a lot of their friends are from Canada or from Seattle, which is really close. But for me, it was destination. Yes, I was going to say. Was it just you or was it your whole family? Oh, my whole family, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did she trash your house? She said she wasn't. She said she didn't. I did. <laughs> Okay. We cleaned up when we were done. <laughs> she did a very good job cleaning up. Yep. But don't oh, worry about it. Speaking of trashing, this is such a good transition. The LeBron James um, mural, mural yeah. was trashed. Speaking of oh. which, this is the drill. Did we tell them this is the drill? This is the drill. Sorry, this is episode 20-something. You we, we said, you s- so So <laughs> someone in, was it Venice? Yeah. Okay, did a, did a mural of LeBron, because that's a very Venice thing to do. Right. Oh, and within yeah. <laughs> how long? Oh, it was probably a day or so. It it was vandalized. And why was it vandalized? Because someone, well, someone I, put a bounty. Well, Jeff Proctor said that I don't know if that's the reason. I read that. Yeah, yeah. I read that story that someone put up three hundred duck, three hundred bucks, go vandalize it, and somebody did, and they fixed it right away. Okay. There's a great video of this thing getting painted in the first place. It's really cool. I thought the process in doing it. Yeah. How it's just like a blank canvas. Trust and, the process. And it's just a and it's an amazing thing to watch these guys do this, and then. Now, see, that's the difference between Philly and L.A. They trust the process. We trash the process. <laughs> <We> trash. <laughs> TM. There you go. <laughs> but, yeah. and But now I have to disagree with you on something. You said on your little tweets yeah. that this was not indicative of Los Angeles. I didn't say that, but I would have said that. Okay. This is so indicative of Los Angeles. <laughs> this is Los Angeles. We said in the last episode, the one thing that brings the, the city together is the riots and such. No, and this is, true. this. Here, here's an example. My son lives in San Francisco and they have this fantastic free concert all in and throughout like Golden Gate Park, multiple stages where they have really big acts, like big, big acts. And you just walk one from the other, you don't have to pay or whatever. And everyone goes out and because it's awesome, everyone's like, hey, let's not screw this up. Yeah, let's yeah. pick up our trash. Let's be nice to each other. I told them if they try to do that in Griffith Park, I give it eight minutes before <laughs> like uh, cars are overturned. Well, did people you go are to being the, murdered. You went to the the Pollywog Park. 
concert this weekend? I didn't. Oh, okay. We were going to, but we were too busy being slay. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not kidding. No, those we're are like, always <laughs> very nice. We're like this, and we're like, you want to go to the concert? Like, nah, I'm yeah. digging this fan right now. Yeah. So what do you think? You Right? How do you think that's any different, that Los Angeles wouldn't do that? I think they would. I'm most most places I go, I think people are pretty respective of what's going on. Yeah. I, I yeah. I don't. I don't. I haven't uh, encountered that that badness of L.A. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. There there is also a thing within uh, graffiti culture and street tagging culture. Banksy, when he there's yeah. that whole uh, documentary, Banksy does New York, where right. he goes and he did a lot of very famous pieces. Uh, one of his most famous pieces there was like basically a heart balloon. Somebody came and tagged over that within like hours of it being up. So that's not all that surprising. Right. Yeah. I think it's very much kind of an ego thing. And plus, and I think we're all thinking it, Kobe's behind it. But that's just. No, I mean, there's a great mural on Sunset Boulevard of Fernando. I don't know if you've seen this. It's painted on the side of an apartment building just before you get to Vin Scully Avenue to get into the stadium. It's 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 a cool kind of landmark that you know you're getting close to the stadium right. that that was, I don't ever believe it's been tagged and mm. see I think if it was magic they wouldn't touch <laughs> it no seriously well there was also a video of a guy somebody put a big uh, like picture of LeBron over the Kobe face on one of his murals and there's a video of a guy who literally took his shoe off and was throwing it repeatedly oh. up at the wall to get LeBron's face down I'm. I'm not joking when I say that this town has disrespected him from the very beginning, mm. and this is another re- example of Los Angeles not respecting LeBron yeah, James. I, you know what? I, I, when he first said this, I thought, oh, no. But I, I am getting it because here's the deal. It's, this is generational. Because of to, Tom and I are the ages we are, we will always be Magic Johnson as the greatest Laker guys. Pretty and, much. In fact, I remember when this conversation even started coming up, I, I was kind of like, are you serious? Are you Seriously, are you comparing Magic Johnson to Kobe Bryant? Kobe Bryant's a great player, but Magic Johnson saved the NBA, not just the Lakers. Yeah, right. But John is right. Like I've talked to people who are so, so entrenched with Kobe. I oh, think yeah. they love Kobe more than they do the Lakers. And I'm not. Exactly- they do. Yes. Right. It's not. It's, it's this weird god idling thing. Yeah. It was the same deal with uh, my uh, my one buddy's uh, cousins. They were one of the one of uh, several people I know that were all rooting for the Celtics against yes. against the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals just because they don't want LeBron to win because they think Kobe is better and any time anytime LeBron wins anything it's a strike against Kobe it makes you wonder John like I I was only I think I was born the year that Roger Maris hit more home runs than Babe Ruth right we both and were, I'd yeah. always heard that not only did a lot of baseball not want him to break the record, Yankee fans specifically didn't want a guy on the Yankees. Well, they wanted to break... Mantle. Well, they, or, they, or, want, or they, wanted they wanted someone Mantle. Else. Yeah. They didn't want Maris. They wanted Mantle, but they also didn't want Ruth's record to go away. I'm wondering. The same people that didn't want Aaron to beat Ruth's right. Well, career there was, record. Uh, well, some little... other things going on there. Yeah. I'm wondering, John. Let's say best case scenario, LeBron wins a couple championships. Now he's got five. Okay, and let's say at this point now they got Kawhi. And they got Boogie. They got a bloated team. And they're going for number six, which puts him ahead of both Magic and Kobe. I have a feeling a lot of this this culture would actually root against him, root, root against the Lakers. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they, the whole thing of winning cures all evil. So That's true. Yeah, I think if he wins a championship in the next couple years, which he only has a few years left. With yeah. the Lakers? With the Lakers. I, I, I swear, you've lost me when he says when he wins two more championships. With, yeah. Where? Not with the Lakers. Nah, with this team as constructed, I don't see it oh, happening. But, but remember 2019, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard. There's going to be a whole bunch of other guys. At that point, you're going to be dragging LeBron up and down the court in a wheelchair. Fair point. I know. I've been thinking about that. Like everyone is saying, especially like, if he plays the entire eighty-two. Oh my like god! He did last yeah, year. yeah. He's he's on. You know, he's he's like Kobe. You start at that teenage, and your body just can't. It, you lose tread on your tires so much at that and, point. And it's a good point. Like at the end of this four-year contract, so I think most people, it's reasonable to say he won't be the best player in the world. But the thing know. about athletes still is perf- right now. Yeah, right now. But the thing about athletes performing at their highest is you don't go from number one to number two. 
you go from number one to about 14, yeah. and then you're 86. And then, I mean, look, just look at Kobe. Yeah, every now and then you can show glimpses, but the difference between these types of players, the, the most elite, elite athlete, the drop off is so quick. But I, I, Kobe had a huge drop off because, and I will give him, you know, I will give this credit to him. He did tear his Achilles tendon mm -hmm. and he did come back and he played fairly well yeah. after, yeah. which, yeah. as everybody is saying, with, uh, Boogie Cousins signing with the Warriors, yeah. that that's often a career-ending right. injury, but there still are five All-Stars on the Warriors right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing about the Boogie Cousins signing is that you can let – that's why it's good to be the king. You can bring a guy on and say, take all the time you want, because basically this crew run here just swept the NBA Finals. So if you come back, that would be nice, but it's not like they need him. The Lakers have no chance to win any title with LeBron James. Okay, Chronicle of this. It's and just do it's, the thing. So in two years, we'll it, just. It's not going to happen. He's here to retire. Ten forty four. He is locked <laughs> into retirement mode. He's got his thirty five million a year. Yeah. He's just coasting, man. He's Did you coasting. just see the team he took to the final? He's coasting. All right, all right. I could not disagree more. I think they're going as a Cavs fan. Yeah. That team he just took to the final. <laughs> Exactly. But he doesn't have to do that anymore. All he has to and do is show up 82 conference. games, get through two rounds. He's he's in retirement. He came to L.A. to retire just like uh, Wilt did. Who won a championship? Not, a, not alone. Finals. He had Wes Baylor. He had a great team. Do you think – just think how Wilt, uh, great yeah. Wilt would have been if he'd had Kyle Kuzma. He would have actually been a legendary person if he had Kyle Kuzma. Take that back. <laughs> 50 years oh. ago, a difference. Wilt came to L.A. 50 years ago. Oh, that's right. Today, yeah. right? Yeah, it was 60, 68. Wow. Yeah. It seems like... No, I'm not going to say it. Anyways. <laughs> no. Uh, hey, a lot's been going on in, in the world, biz-wise. It's business time. And we, we our friend Anthony Pignataro was on last time, and we talked mostly about Hawaiian shirts, because we thought that was somehow, you know, important. It was part of the Hawaiian business. Yeah. No, I noticed you don't have one on I today. can't. Uh, it's, yeah. in the, it's in the laundry. Okay. How about we do some business? Uh, it's business time. Let's do it. Business time. business time. Oh, I love it. We'll start with LeBron. Uh, when Shocking. He, when we <laughs> rewind to the LeBron comes to L.A. story, the uh, the first thing is, where did you hear about it? Yes. And it was on a 5 p.m. on a Sunday. Remember that? July 1st? Yes. Fox did some research. They, served a th they surveyed 1,000 NBA fans. Survey says the biggest place the people heard about it was on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Facebook. 16%. 14% wow. heard about it from a national sports TV channel. Okay. 14%. I got 14. a text that just said Woj bomb. Yeah. <laughs> and Word I knew of mouth. something had happened. So Word I, of uh, mouth was 8%. Word of mouth was there. Local TV news, Twitter, Instagram. So the funny part, if you want to go down, nine people found out from the radio. <laughs> One person found out from the newspaper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> One so person sad. found out from somebody asking him in this survey. <sighs> I got I got a text. <laughs> really? He said, I did not know that until you just told me that. Are you serious? One person out of a thousand said, I did not know that until you just told me that. That oh just gave me a very, uh, you know that scene in Dumb and Dumber where Jim Carrey goes to walk out of the bar and he stops and he checks the newspaper? Yeah. And then he goes out and he goes, we landed on the moon! <laughs> That's basically right. what I just felt like. Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow, way. I found out from you. Yeah, that's weird. You, you, and I found out from my son, who found out on social media and texted yeah. me as I got out of the shower. So it, it seemed like Not it was kind of an that, interesting but, yeah. case study in how sports fans get their news these days. Yeah, so what do, what do we take from this? That basically, we put this thing better hit because it, it, all the other uh, stuff You better get dead. your Graham account up to date. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I need, I need that phone. You need the phone. I need the phone. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it the up. phone and the gram. I, yeah, I, I do need the phone. Absolutely yeah. need the phone. Yeah, so th to me, this is a seismic change. When they said he, him coming to L.A. was a seismic change in, in the NBA, but this shows you how much things have changed. Uh, in in crazy way, considering the first two times he changed, and you know it was a TV show, and then it was a, a Sports Illustrated story. So, I was just going to say that uh, Sports Center has been – putting out all the, you know, on this day for the last couple of days. Yeah. And I believe today was the uh, eight-year anniversary of LeBron to the Heat right. announcement. Where right, the announcement to, with where all the uniforms. The, we're going to, not one, yeah. not two, yeah. not three. And I'll never forget they had a thing that said, we did it. And like, what did you yeah. do? You didn't do yeah. anything yet. You just yeah. signed a bunch you, of guys. You just signed it a bunch. It looked like yeah. some boy band just got discovered. Yeah, right. It was yeah. a weird, weird announcement. It, very odd. 
but yeah. and then uh yeah a couple of days ago and it made me really uh, a couple of days ago would have been the eight-year anniversary yeah. of the decision which was the whole tv thing and i was like god what a weird thing to have done and looking <laughs> back on it it's like and that really was the reason most people in northeast ohio really hated them yeah. i would think so because decision. yeah yeah, it seemed to kind of rub their nose in it. Right. It really was. Even though he w- w- didn't, he do that like to benefit the Boys and Girls Club. He said donated so. some like three point five million dollars to yeah. Boys and that Girls. That got Club. lost in the hole. But yeah. he did it in right. Connecticut, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not good. And he took his talents. Yeah, Johnny always says like um, you know like when you hear a convicted like a, a criminal and he's sitting there at his trial. And if the jury comes in and someone looks at him and then averts his eyes, he's like, uh-oh, I'm screwed. And Johnny always says, when that happened, he went, this yeah, is yeah. hard. Johnny's like, oh, it. shit, that's hard. it. Yeah, I uh, knew well uh, before he said I was uh, taking my talents anywhere. Yeah, it was exactly. just the look on his face when he sat down. I was like, ah, we're screwed. <laughs> so the second part of the yeah. LeBron business story is, yeah. did you guys see Space Jam? You remember that movie? Mm-hmm. How old were you when you watched Space Jam? Have you not seen Space Jam, Elizabeth? Have you ever seen it? No. 1990. I think it came out in 96, 97, somewhere in there. I remember it was in heavy rotation in the uh, the, the minivan to keep my kids quiet. Oh, there you go. Put it in the thing. Watch Space Jam. Well, with LeBron's new media company, which is linked to Warner Brothers, one of the first projects that they've said that they're going to do is Space Jam 2. And some people in the NBA are saying that's kind of sacrilegious. Leave yeah. the first one alone. That's, 1996. There you oh, go. perfect. Wow, let it go. We had uh, one of the players, Patrick Peterson, the Oklahoma City, said pretty much, for the sake of preserving its greatness, we must never try to improve it. It would be like trying to paint the Mona Lisa again. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> okay. <What? there's, laughs> <Harrison. laughs> right. It took my breath away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> go, Johnny. When was the last time you guys actually watched this movie? Oh, when my, when my kids, kids were yeah. Yeah. eight, yeah. maybe. All right. I caught it on TV about a year ago. Okay. Has, how was it held up? It has not. <laughs> <laughs> One, like, I think LeBron is probably a little bit of a better actor than uh, Michael Jordan. Well, he's had some practice. He's, he's got a little uh, train wreck. And yeah, yeah, he was in yeah. train wreck, and he was very funny in that. He was yeah. on Saturday Night Live, yeah. and he was very funny on that, unlike yeah. Michael Jordan. He yeah. was very bad on Saturday yeah. Night Live. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think it would actually be an improvement on the movie. And I think you're right. So be- bad because I think the writers can write for LeBron, who's willing to make fun of himself. Yeah. Michael Jordan takes Michael himself walk, yeah. really seriously. Yeah. Too seriously. Oh, yeah. big yeah. time seriously. So he seriously, really did think he was saving the world. Yeah. Really. So seriously that he's going to hang a flag over here just so he's never seen in another logo. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. And I, that's why I think the show could be, and, and of course, the ability to do what they they did that that uh, having live action and animation on it's it, the ability to do that's even better now. And yeah, it's yeah. we're light years ahead of where it is. Yeah, it's it ain't, it ain't Mary Poppins, but it's you know it's not uh, any. You remember Mary Poppins? That was of the first the first one to sort of yeah. put animation with live things. Yeah, that, that's in the '60s, so it's not any sort of. Big, Actually, big, it was a Gene Kelly thing. I was Gene just going to say with Tom and Jerry. Look at us messing with Gene you. Gene Kelly with Tom and Jerry? No, just Tom. And he danced. <laughs> he danced with Tom. It's a very famous scene. Yes, it's great. Oh. And it came alive. But anyways, we're smarter anyway, than you. So anyway, um, I just wanted to bring I totally out agree Space that Jam. it would be better. And you said to me, well, they'd have to get someone to play the Bill Murray part. Right. I'd get Bill Murray. Yeah, it's Bill Murray. Oh, yeah, he's got to do that. Kevin Hart would be kind of funny. Oh, that'd be funny. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Oh, he could do the... Um, the Newman guy. Although the Newman guy's still around. Hello, Newman. Yeah, the Newman yeah, guy's still true. around. All right, next uh, story. Boom. Uh, Anchors Away was the film, by yes, the way. Yes, Anchors right. Away. All right. Uh, in The Ringer, Brian Curtis wrote a story recently about uh, there isn't this soccer is horrible backlash in the World Cup lately. The American soccer trolls seem to have been... Uh, tuned out to this thing. Why do you think that's the reason? If you're younger, you, you don't realize this, that back, well, when Tommy and I were daily journalists, I, I was I was telling everyone last week that if you wanted to make points with your 60-ish sports editor, you just wrote some kind of funny column ripping soccer, and they're like, Atta oh, boy. Yeah. That was easy, so cheesy. I used yeah. to call it kickball, and I would just love to hear the response. Uh, you do that on this show. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and, and they'd, add a boy, way to go. Yeah. And, and it was seen as this kind of... Um, conspiratorial kind of eh, the old world coming in here and right. and messing with our beautiful um, uh, sports that right. only we like. And But now, um, I think there's been a huge acceptance of it. Now, someone does point out 
that the reason there's an acceptance is the fact that the U.S. didn't get in the World Cup. That's the easy answer. No, no one's really watching from here, they say. But I, I think it's a, a generational thing. Your generation is good with it, right? Mm -hmm. You love your soccer? Yeah, love my soccer. Say that in the microphone, please. <laughs> love our soccer. <laughs> and you're not into technology, but you do like soccer. <laughs> there you go. Way to go. But no. yeah. And, then, and some of the reason, too, is they think that the 2014 Men's World Cup and the 2015 Women's World Cup really kind of lifted it as a TV. Right. And, and it's, I think we have a better appreciation for it. We, we can sort of uh, agree to disagree with people who want to rip it, but we can also say what's wrong with it. It's Johnny, you are Mr. Meat and Potatoes, Mr. Heartland, Mr. Football, so Mr. Cleveland. So you're right from the heart. Give us your soccer journey. Was there a time when you saw it as Namby, Pamby, and Wimpy, and did you used to make fun of it? I still make fun of it every now and then okay. um, because it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Uh, but I make fun of other sports a sure. lot more now. Like I make fun of the NFL pretty heavily uh, just because it's getting quite ridiculous. Um, what was your tipping point with soccer, do you think? Uh, I don't know. It was definitely one of the World Cups I got really into. Uh, oh, two? Oh, oh, no kidding. That far back. Yeah. And uh, like, because I. That was going into my freshman year in high school, and we had a. Uh, there was a bunch of friends of mine that were. I I had summer gym, so we mm. didn't have to take gym during the year, which was great. Right. And uh, made a bunch of friends, and they, a lot of freshmen did that, so you can get in and learn your freshman class and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and make friends before you actually get to high school. Right. And a uh, bunch of guys that I was friends with were soccer players, and they're like, "Oh no, you got to come watch!" And I got really into it, and uh, of course, we lost to Czechoslovakia or not Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, mm. three, nothing in like mm -hmm. the first game. And I was like, this is crap. Was that, yeah. uh, so the, did the team have what Donovan and Lawless and Kobe yeah. Jones? Yeah, it was that Kobe team. Kobe Jones. Kobe Jones. Yeah. Tony Miola. You know, one thing that I think has really helped the World Cup this year in this country is I saw a stat that basically half the players left in the tournament playing the Premier League. Okay. And the Premier League is certainly the most popular league to watch in America. It is. Um, in the world. With yeah, the generation right. of generation of your generation, it's it's much more popular. NBC shows it. Yeah. A lot of them are English, so we can understand what they're saying. It's it's just a ton of fun to watch. So in a way, a lot of people, yeah, the US team isn't there, but if you're a Chelsea fan, if you're an Arsenal fan, if you're a Man U fan, you see your guy. So in a way, you're like, oh my guy's in the tournament. Right. So you do have a, a dog in the fight. And you can root for a country that you normally wouldn't root for. Who are you rooting for right now? We got well, we, I think we have a consensus that the final will probably be England-France, which I think is the, the Battle of the Titans, which makes sense from what's left. Although, I would, I, I'm partial to Cro Croatia based on my uh, nearness to San Pedro. Wouldn't you, Croatia should be favored against England, right? They're the superior team? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to really look it up. I've watched more Croatia than England matches so far. Yeah. I like Croatia, but yeah. I really I think for for fun's sake of oh. internet memes and everything else, uh, England and France would yeah. be the most fun. England and France has a possibility of being the wouldn't you think like the the biggest watch sporting yeah, it's, ever? Yeah, it would be like a Yankee Dodger no World way. Series. No way. Why not? What would be bigger? Uh, anytime Pakistan and India play each other in cricket. <laughs> no, he's absolutely <laughs> right. Cricket, You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. And I do miss the fact that Germany not being this far, uh, you know, prevents me from going to Alpine Village and get, have an excuse yeah. to go down there to watch games. Funny thing, people in France and England don't feel the same way. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder I wonder why. Hmm. Hmm. You can just go get a sausage. Hmm. Oh, I do. Uh, you can always get sausage. I do. What do you got? Uh, speaking of sports that we don't uh, watch particularly speaking well. Speaking of sports. Speaking of sports we don't. <laughs> we do that here. John sent out a tweet the other day, which I thought was funny. He goes, ESPN is now, ESPN2 is now showing Slam Ball. <laughs> and I piqued my interest for about a minute, and I go, oh, this is like nothing I'd ever want to watch. Do you know what Slam Ball is? I was just going to say, what is Slam Ball? You do ball? know what it is, I bet. If you've ever been down at the beach and you see four people standing spike around. Ball. Spike, spike Ball. Yeah, it was yeah. Spike Ball, okay, yeah. not yeah. Slam Ball. Slam? Really? I thought yeah. it was called like Spike Ball. Now? Yeah, they that's had... on television. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they had it on, on ESPN2 yeah. and uh, on like Saturday afternoon. The championship. It, it was played in a baseball field, out in the left field area of this <laughs> baseball diamond. Yeah, I, I was I was dumbfounded, and I was I said the tweet I sent out I was like I'm glad to see ESPN it going straight ocho. Yeah, they and, did go straight ocho. Yeah. And putting on the most obscure sport I've ever seen, 
And then I was like, wait, I've seen that down at the beach. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we were thinking about what constitutes a sport that deserves to be on TV. Because at right. this point in the, in the summer, we're watching hot dog eating contests and cornhole yes. and things it, that we just. It is the dog days of summer right <laughs> now. <laughs> But my uh, one of the things I've actually sort of enjoyed was uh, Ultimate Disc League. I don't know if you know that we Ultimate Disc. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We have an Ultimate Disc team in LA called the Aviators. They play over at Occidental College. Okay. I did a story about them just because I thought, well, this is kind of you know, they get they've got a great. <laughs> mm, this kind of wow. Well, give it a shot. Give it a shot. It's kind of it's kind of like football though. They you know yeah. they. they do pass. It's very athletic. And yes. It, it's, and they don't really have a lot of TV coverage. They have uh, more video streaming. Um, I, do, I thought you were saying they don't really have a lot of girlfriends. Um, I think they do, actually. <laughs> and in fact, every now and then, <laughs> some ultimate disc plays show up on ESPN's yeah, Top 10. they do. That's every now and they're then. they're spectacular. Yeah. They are they're spectacular. Yeah, yeah. They truly lay out every now and then. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so how did you, would you come away with? From watching Ultimate Disc, I was I could appreciate the fact that these are athletes who you know could play any other sport, soccer, football, right? And this is what they choose to play, and that's it was kind of cool. Well, and when you think about it, it's so arbitrary. The sports that we raise up, there there is no reason the basketball is any greater than Ultimate Disc. I was telling Tommy, ninety percent of sports were invented because people were either drunk. Or bored. That's how basketball yeah, they, starts. They're all inside. They got nothing to do. They oh, were test, yeah. Put up a, you know. Something to, to avoid boredom. Right? I think the entire Winter Olympics yeah. are drunken boast. I bet I could jump off that. Yeah, I bet you can. <laughs> all right, <laughs> go ahead. I, I bet, bet you I could that. ski and shoot and kill right. something. <laughs> exactly. But that was no just, way. That's, no, just that's food old game. army training. That's, that's, food, yeah. that's food gathering. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, so, but now the interesting thing about this is Johnny was telling us that a friend of yours is actually the voice of Cornhole. Yes. <laughs> which which just sounds like a, yes. a really odd video. He is, but... the, uh, he is the play-by-play guy Okay. for the National Cornhole League, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry, Ryan, if I got that. I'll look it up and get it Ryan, right. Ryan, you're awesome. Because I've actually watched you, Ryan. Yeah, uh, Ryan yeah. Alessio is his name. Yeah. Uh, he went to Youngstown State with me. Does he have a lot of Twitter followers? Uh, could... i got to double-check on him. All right, I hope so. I think the season – and i got to tell you, Ryan – not long ago, I was sitting with someone, and we turned it on to laugh at it. We watched the yeah. whole thing. No, it's right. like curling, right? You, oh, yeah. You, you go to mock it, and you go, this ain't so bad. Curling is so entertaining. Yeah. Curling? Yeah. I think it is. Well, because you've been in Canada, and they, they got <laughs> now you. Now you, you've yeah. been infiltrated. It, that's, that's why they're nice. You've been brainwashed. I've actually curled before. It's in the water. Have you really? I really have. Which one were you? Which one was that? Well, were, were you, were you, were you, you have you, a different oh, position? Oh, I've were done you both. I did the, the stone thing where you push it, and then I also did the... Sweeper. Okay, Sweeper. so I understand. How did you play the sport and not know <laughs> any of the terminology? Party. Uh, what? Yeah, one of my friends did it as a birthday party. Well, Pinned a tail on the donkey is not good enough do anymore. Where do you go to? Who has a curling cool ones. court? Cool. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Better where, parties where than it? you go it was to. Yeah, no doubt. Skating center. Wow. Yeah. So how were you at curling? I mean, I was it's hard. Good. You got to wear the right you? shoes for that. <laughs> yeah. I did. I had to do it as a it's actually uh, really hard. Yeah, it is oh, very hard. Like your form and everything. Yeah, it's very I would hard. Yeah, it's very, yeah. It's, very, yeah. it's not like bowling. It's very hard no. to control what you're doing without falling down and looking like a fool. Can we get when when they go to their Super Bowl? Can we get Ryan like to talk to us about? I'll put in a call. See what we can do. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm serious. It was I am awesome. too. I oh. will. They would have things, John, where like they'd get to the end of one of the things, and there'd be like three or four bags right around the hole, but they hadn't gone in. And one of these dudes would just go, okay, boom, yeah. hit it, and all four would go in. It's crazy. It's crazy. How do you develop that talent? I don't know. Yeah, I do know. And I don't. I do know. <laughs> backyard barbecue. As I was going to say, I do yeah. know. I A lot of tailgate parties. It's yeah. very big at uh, college football tailgates. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I didn't know that was a sport. Guys, right. it's yeah. huge. Well, yeah. When are we going to see keg stands as the next uh, ESPN TV well, there sport? There you go. They used to put that back in the 80s. It was called World's <laughs> Strongest Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Which is not on much anymore. I actually caught it on the on, uh, CBS Sports Network, had it on yeah. Uh, yeah. from the Philippines the other day. Yeah. You know how I uh, used to know that there was some big sporting event that I was missing? Is my TV normally, I begin and end with ESPN. And then I go to other stuff. And I would turn on ESPN. And if ESPN had on a cheerleading competition, I was like, what's going on? Oh, the Indy 500. You know, like that. Because that was when ESPN just said, look, no one's watching us now. 
They're watching the football game. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. When they have wear counter programming themselves, they yeah. have to put on something that's completely different from what they're yeah. going on. And they get the eight people who don't care about the Indy right. 500. Right. And they, but they get the, the the cheerleading moms that want to watch the kids exactly. do the cheerleading. So yeah. it was, it's great counter program. You yeah. can't take siphon away from what you're putting on ABC at that point. Right. Exactly. So uh, you watch cheerleading, huh? I just said I. I just knew it's now an NCAA sport. I think. Do you know what? There are more injuries in cheerleading in, at the college level than I think any other sport except gymnastics, which it, it basically is something super high too. Yeah, like cheerleading yeah. and college gymnastics are just like destroying yeah. girls' brains and yes. knees. Yes, yeah. absolutely. When yeah. are we going to see parkour? Is that how you pronounce it? See, I, I, they used to they used to televise that too. They did yeah. at one point in time. Mm. What's, but, a, what's so, the craziest event you've had to cover as a, a production person oh does pro wrestling count because mm. i did that back in the day yeah i used to do pro wrestling and mma um, did you say it was backyard wrestling though right no it was oh. independent wrestling okay. so it, it had like a ring but it was still put together by people wearing icp clothing <laughs> um probably yeah pro wrestling yeah. but uh the way but i have done a show similar to how these things are put together where uh, when you're watching it, you notice that all the ads, or at least a majority of the ads, are related to sure. something. So sure. if you're watching yeah. Cornhole, it's CornholeBags.com right. Right, right, right. or yeah. something like that. So what they're basically doing is ESPN's not paying anything. No, they're buying the time. They're buy- yeah. yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's a commercial. Oh, okay. It's basically a giant commercial, commercial yeah. to promote themselves as Cornhole or Spikeball or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So... Yes, it's a zero cost effort for them. Right. Very similar to this podcast. And your friend Ryan, <laughs> but they make it look, but they make it look like something you should be uh, watching. I take it out in in uh, yeah, they, chilled cokes. They give them the whole. They'll they <laughs> yeah. give you access to the graphics package. Right. They give you the score yeah. bug. Yeah. And say, okay, go ahead and put it on. Which exactly looks like Dodgeball, the movie. Right. And it's also yeah. a great way that they can develop talent, like your friend. Right. Yeah. Oh, and sure. It's a it's a great way of doing that. And somebody yeah. who's been c- trying to cut their teeth in local. Sports radio or something yeah. like that can really you become an expert in a sport that otherwise nobody would care about. Right? Yeah. Well, you, like baseball <laughs> or yeah. drone racing. Drone. Or... Oh, drone racing! I actually enjoyed drone racing. Now I used that to... was really cool. Yeah. NBC yeah. SN, which I think <laughs> it, it it varies between like soccer, the most popular sport, and then everything else on it is like if you own a yacht, you'll like this. So they'll have like. Those car auctions, like oh, a million dollar Mustang. I never said why those have on a sports channel. Airplane racing, like oh, you know, which is the awesome. Red Bull, the Red, Red Bull, Bull Air. Oh, oh yeah, those are, those are insane. Yeah, those are insane. but it's money. You but know? you're right. The the drone racing. I forgot all about that. How much I really enjoy that. I did a column about this because I found out the old Hawthorne Mall was being used. For these drone races, that was actually a really cool setup because yeah. they made it like destroyed and like it looked like some in LA. Yeah, it looked like some uh, you know grand uh, you know Omega Man kind right. of set. Yeah, and they didn't have to do anything. It, it, it's just a burned out <laughs> That's mall. A mall. The escalators are still there. You know, the J.C. Penney logo is still in, in, and you just see these drones just and they put these things up there to make it look like L.A. Had just blown up. It was crazy. What is it? Is something about a drone in like in, between walls that just on the surface of it? Is creepy, like like because it's yeah. so close. Like you just think something's gonna jump out at any moment. Or and like, you, it, I got creeped out this morning. I went out to get my newspaper. Get me? Oh, no, I got because I was <laughs> thinking, I got creeped out. I saw a drone from the neighbor down below the hill, hovering above, and I go, "What is this guy doing?" Ooh, uh, yeah, drones. Looking in your windows, Tom. I don't know, mm. but I hear actually, I hear that uh, drones are going to be the new firework shows. Do you remember the, the Olympics uh, in uh, Beijing? Okay. Instead of doing fireworks, they did these drone things where they sent all these drones up with lights, and it was really cool. <sighs> Lady Gaga did it at the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. And then yeah. she had it at Coachella as well. Yeah. And then uh, Odessa, I think it is, I mean, uh, had it at Coachella this you year guys as well. Right. You guys, you dig those? Dro- drone show. Are they lit? Oh, Lord. Yeah. Is, L-I-T. Is that still a word we can use? I mean, uh, Not that not, you said it. Oh, no. no. Okay. This is, not the way you're using it. It was lit. <laughs> oh, this, Does it keep dogs from going crazy? I'm this all for is it. why we don't get paid, okay? <laughs> all right, you got anything else? Uh, yeah, some baseball news. <gasps> um, first of all, I, I had a great conversation this morning with Bob Costas about this new documentary. That don't ML- you think you should ask Costas about that if, if it was a great conversation? I think he was entertained by the yeah. by the end of it. Okay. Yeah, I have it all on on tape if you want to hear it. For crying out loud! So Bob and I, who've had our uh, moments in the past, 
Last time I talked to Bob, by the way, he called me complaining, but that's a whole other story. Okay. Right. So there's a documentary MLB Network called Only in Hollywood, which is a look back at the 1988 Dodgers season, not just the World Series, not just Kirk Gibson, but that entire how they changed the uh, the, the focus of the team, uh, Fred Clare taking over, getting Kirk Gibson, right. getting Mickey Hatcher and the, and the stuntmen, and just kind of going through this whole season to where uh, it, it's it's a 48 minute documentary, but I was I was surprised how emotional it really is. If you've gone through this, you remember certain things, but when you watch this, you forget that this certain things happen. I mean, the entire NLCS against the Mets could be a documentary mm-hmm. itself. But then I think what makes it emotional is because Oral Hershiser is one of the three narrators or speaks a lot in this. And he gets very emotional when he talks about Kirk Gibson coming back and Tommy Lasorda for this 30 year reunion that they right. have. You know, Tommy's 90, Kurt's 60, and he's got Parkinson's. And, mm-hmm. and Oral's almost like saying, this is such a huge event in my life. Right. This is kind of the last hurrah mm-hmm. for us to celebrate it. And it's such a well-done documentary. Um, I, I encourage you to, to tune in to MLB Network and watch this. Is it Cost, today? No, it's it's on Sunday. Okay. S- Sunday the 15th. Okay. Um, Costas is part of it because he was doing the series for NBC and uh, made this funny comment before Game 4 that the Dodger lineup was probably the weakest of all time, which it was because yeah. they had so many injuries, and, and how Lasorda used that as kind of a rallying cry and, right. and claimed that Costa should be the MVP of the World Series for getting everybody up. Um, but So I, I just wanted to kind of point that out. Plus, Bob is getting induct not inducted. He's being honored by the Baseball Hall of Fame later this month for the Ford C. Frick Award as mm. a broadcaster. So. Yeah. It's kind of a cool conversation. You know, I was thinking when you mentioned Costas, John, it just goes to prove that like so much of like uh, sports, th- we talk about sports now as being like a television show. Yeah. And I was thinking if Costas were to do cornhole or spike ball, all of a sudden. Or basketball. Or basketball or Which he uh, did. ultimate disc. <laughs> all of a sudden I would be like, oh, well, I guess it's a sport. It would feel more like a sport because certain people have that. You know what I mean? That kind of standing that you'd be like, oh, wow. He could make it automatically worth watching, except basketball, I think, is like a really sore subject in his career resume. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's sore about it? Oh, he and Al Michaels thought this was going to be a real fun project, and then it turned out to be the movie. Not only bombed, but they gave them these lines that now haunt them for the rest of their lives. Oh, like what? Uh, Well, Well, it was the creators of South Park that made that movie. They sort of sold it. Yeah, yeah, right. You can imagine where they go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I've seen the movie. I love it. I don't. In fact, I thought it was one of those movies that didn't do well in the theater, but like video Mm, and it it hasn't done well at all. No. It's a pretty damn funny movie. Not a cult classic, really. No, it's no. There's nothing really good about it. (laughs) Like Space Jam, don't hold up to anything. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, it does not hold up. It yes. is no. so bad. Space Jam is really bad. So, I can't get over yeah. how bad it is. The yeah. last thing about the business I wanted to bring up is uh, I've been paying attention to what John Smoltz has been talking about a lot lately on the Fox baseball broadcast. Uh, there's been a couple of Dodger games where Joe Davis was his play-by-play partner. Yeah. And this past Saturday, he was on with, with Joe Buck. And uh, John has some ideas about the current game um, that a lot of people have, Bob Costas included, Right. that it's a hard game to watch when, you know, maybe f- uh, four minutes of total ball in, a- ball in play is yeah. actually happening during a three-hour time period. You're either getting a walk, a strikeout, yeah. or a home yeah. run. and um, It's basically all or nothing. And then pitching changes and how to, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a harder game to watch. But when you complain about it, you sound like the old man screaming on the porch. And that's right. kind of what Smoltz was getting some blowback from, even right. though what he was saying, I think, was fairly accurate. Um, Casas didn't really want to get into that, you know, uh, slamming the game. Bob is, is somebody who still enjoys the game, but he, right. he notices its shortcomings. Yeah. And as an entertainment uh, thing, it's, it's, it's losing a lot of interest because these people who are running the game are smart. And yeah. they have, you know, if you could show them 10% increase in winning a game, they're going to do it. Of course. Right. And so, but what you've done is you've made the game become like watching a chess match and it's, right. it's just not fun to watch anymore. So, uh, I just didn't know, uh, what you guys thought about well, broadcasters I, yeah. who sort of, you know, sour on the game while they're broadcasting. Well, it. Sometimes and, it's hard to, and we to, saw this in to bas- digest. We saw this in basketball where, pa- uh, Greg, um, um, Popovich would rest his players. And, and then this, outcry came hey people are tuning in to see it people are buying tickets to see it and Popovich's point is look man 
I'm not paid to create a good TV show. I am paid to get my team to the championship and win. And that's the problem is now because sports have become such a big TV show, the interest of the people over here who manage the team, who play for the team, are not exactly the interest no, the, of the, two don't the marry people anymore. who bring us the sport. And this is when it kind of screws up. They, they're, These people are saying, hey, we want to win games. And it's been proven if you say, if you launch angle and all this, yeah. and you get home runs, you're going to win more games. But it doesn't make it a very exciting TV product. No. And what do you do? Do you start to actually change fundamentally your game? That's what they're talking Just, about. And that's that's too bad because it shouldn't have to be changed except that someone has found these loopholes into making the game more winnable. Yeah. And you can't blame them, but it's not as entertaining to watch anymore. So well, that's And of course they've done already things to make it more as a TV. Like when I was a kid, the idea that you could talk <laughs> to a coach yeah. before the fourth quarter of a one-point game in the playoffs would be the most insane thing in the world. And now, of course, they do it. They're acknowledging. Not only that, it's required by the league. Yes. Yeah. You can't say, no, I'd rather not do well, that. Well, now they mic managers and talk to him you know, live in the dugout during games. Right. Spring training, they had guys in the outfield there yeah, interviewing during the really game, funny. which was great, especially the yes. not going to make it to this one, guys. Yeah, yeah right. That was, a, <laughs> that that was, was so hilarious. great. Yeah. But, you're, but, but that just goes to prove that more and more it is a television show. It's really not a sport to your surfing uh, argument, <laughs> right? It's not well, really it's sport. less of a sport that it's enjoyable to watch. Yeah. And, and whether John Smoltz kind of bringing this up on, the, on a national broadcast is going to change it or whether it's souring people because attendance is down. Yeah. Uh, TV ratings, I don't know if they're down or up, but they're probably not great. Um, it's hard to compete with, with things going on. John might be able to talk. There is something like in football – People just talk about the game because the game is going on. Basketball, the same thing. In baseball, because they have so much time, there is a long history, going back to Tim McCarver at least, of people critiquing the game as it's going along, how the game is played, why the game is yeah, played. Yeah, there's so much time to fill. In, the, in football, you're just saying this is what's happening right now. And, yeah, and yeah. You, so I think it lends itself towards kind of that old man stay off my lawn type of stuff, you know? Yeah, and, and um, I, I mean, I don't know any way around it. Is there a good time to talk about it? Maybe not during the game. With me? Because No, because no, when no. I was watching the game, I was kind of like, yeah, I know this, but you're kind of spoiling the game for me. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, maybe there's a place and a time to know your audience. Does your audience really want to watch this? Or do they, is this something for outside the lines, right? You're not big on people complaining in a baseball booth, are you? <laughs> in a From booth? Our... No, because I think you got a pretty great job. And, right. and anytime you complain while you're working in a Anybody baseball game. Anybody in particular it's... that you have a problem with? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a thing now that Beto has actually turned me on to, if you want to bring this up. It's yeah. called Getting Steinered. Oh, okay. So oh. It's, so this is not, this is not, this has nothing to do with my uh, critique of Charlie Steiner when he was doing spring training games. It was very cranky. And right. So now when you get Steinered, you are listening to a game on the radio, and there's a long fly ball to right field, and the ball is gone. Oh, no, it's off the wall. You know, and it yeah. happens way more than it should. Right. Um, the other day, uh, he called a home run by Max Muncy, and it was Jock Peterson. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and Rick Monday did not yeah. save him. Yeah and, yeah. and it's like, yeah. And then people defended him. We love Charlie. Yeah, Charlie's the uncle, right? Right. <laughs> Now Charlie's sort of the uncle that you just kind of worry about. Well, they look very much alike, except Max Muncy is much shorter and has a beard. But besides that, who can tell the difference? <laughs> and then the, the, the damn thing is that Muncy did hit a home run the next at bat, right? And he came up right after. And then he has to go, and now. Now yeah, that was it. Muncy. And then he kind of. Oh, rah, 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 rah. You've yeah. been Steinered. <laughs> You've been Steinered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people are not happy about getting Steinered. It's a thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I got. Is that the biz? That's our business. All right. So uh, mm, 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 mm. it's business over. You know, Tommy and I, <laughs> I'm just going to keep Did going. Go. Let's turn it to we Sister Sledge. Take going. us out. Take us out. Uh, Tommy and I are writers, and we thought we should start doing things. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore this. Uh, where we actually write and write about things that we care about. And so uh, we're going to call it the uh, Get This. The two-minute drill? The drill for two minutes. No, the two-minute drill. Oh, that's true. Yeah, see? And yeah. it's at the end of the show when you would normally expect exactly. a two-minute drill Exactly. This is happen. when you're going into kind of your uh, uh, most important phase. We thought this out, phase. right? Yeah. We thought this out. So tell me, um, we so ran... So, Steve, you are the first test of the yes. two-minute drill. Yes, yes. So I have to read it, so I have to put these on. <laughs> I do. 
Now, if you're on the we podcast, have no teleprompter. If you're on the podcast, this won't make any difference. This is if the you're... part of the show when the sports reporters on ESPN right. used to read a little essay, and the other guys would go, "Way to go!" But snicker, they were on snicker. a teleprompter, yeah. and uh, yeah, this is where Lupica say, would get at a boy. I think all the cokes I drank yeah. took the money out of the teleprompter budget, so we can't do that. So I got to do it. All right, here yep. we are. Two minute drill. Play the music and let's go. You ready? Steve? Ba, ba, da, da, Take it away. Da, 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 da. I guess I don't know. Sure. Two go. minute. Ready? You know, uh, okay, so I was going to try and ease into this and make it a bit softer and more palatable. But then I thought of the inspiring words of Mahatma Gandhi who said, screw it, okay? I hate tall guys, all right? I hate them. And people ask me, Steve, why would you hate tall guys? (laughs) That's such a tall guy thing to say, okay? Tall guys get everything. Don't time this, I'm going to go over. (laughs) Clothes are made to fit them. You walk into a store with one of them, they get weighted on first, okay? Um, everything is handed to them. Do you realize, do you realize that guys six feet or taller make up 14% of the American population, but they comprise 60% of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies? Even if you don't have a corner office, do you know that tall people make an average of $789 more per inch annually? <laughs> Now, what does that poorly worded stat mean? I have no idea. (laughs) Tall guys suck. This all came bubbling up for me uh, when I read a terrific piece by Dave Fleming in ESPN the magazine about how common it is for guys to gently fudge or outright lie about their height. In the piece, he points out how even those blessed with copious amounts of tallness will lie, lie and yearn for more. He quotes Kevin Durant saying that on a basketball court, he's 6'10", but when the girls are around, he's seven feet. (laughs) So selfish, so tall. (laughs) Now I know what you're saying. Oh, Steve, you're just upset because you're short. Hey, I'm not short, okay? I'm of completely average height. Almost average. (laughs) Average adjacent, okay? I'm okay with me, all right? But apparently my basketball coaches weren't. Uh, When I used to clearly outplay one of their taller pets, I'd always get this. Well, Steve, you can't coach height. And so once I'd even played my way onto the court, they would list me at being significantly taller than I was. I could never figure out why they were trying somehow to intimidate the opposition by listing me at six feet. Okay, were were they just ashamed of my five foot eight frame because I didn't somehow measure up, which, by the way, is a tall term. Okay, true. So I was made to feel ashamed of not being tall. And it wasn't just my coaches. The entire English language, Tommy, is set up to do it. If you cheat someone, you shorted them, Uh right? If you're someone who doesn't consider the consequences of your actions, you're said to be (sighs) short-sighted. If you're someone who takes advantage of you, you've been you've taken it in the shorts, (laughs) or someone has you by the short well, okay. (laughs) If if a if a tall guy attempts to better himself, I'm sorry, if a not tall guy attempts to better himself, he is accused from suffering from short man syndrome. True. You know what they call a tall guy that does that? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> and please, tall guy. Okay. Don't tell me how hard your life is because every now and then you have to duck under a doorway. Okay. All ducking under a doorway does to you, tall guy, is remind everyone how tall you are, okay? Oh, watch your head on that doorway, tall guy. By the way, would you like to be CEO of GM, right? If it sounds like I'm paranoid or bitter, I, I, I just hope you can realize they made me this way. Who are they? I'm not sure. But one thing I know is how tall they are. That's it, Tommy. Two minutes. It was probably about four. Thanks for tuning into the drill. Oh, oh man. <laughs> By the way, how tall are you? Six feet even. John? Six foot one. Damn it. I'm six foot. Are you six foot? Six no. foot? No. Damn it. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> and the guy who runs this show, uh, Jeff Proctor, he's about eight foot 90, yeah. eight right? Foot so. Nine. Eight foot 90. Six, Can I offer the tall man's rebuttal? Okay. Ooh. Yes. Yep. When was the last time you were on an airplane? Just keep, keep it short. Oh, here again. Oh. Keep it short. And everyone's supposed to feel bad. The mistress <laughs> to stretch his legs out. And, and I'm sure they came with cool drinks and That's soothing That's why they get the extra legroom room seats. Yeah. Okay. Long story short, this is where we end the drill. God damn it. Thank you for this. <laughs>